Good evening and welcome to the programme in which we boldly empty the nose of news into the handkerchief of satire. Welcome to Have I Got News For You, taking a look at the last seven days, the last seven pulsating vital days of world news. As Iraq runs short of medical supplies, patients waiting for pacemakers are forced to improvise. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Saddam Hussein remains calm and even finds time for his regular Thursday night toga party. <laughs> More drama in Britain, where the Rochdale Social Workers' Inquiry spreads further south. <laughs> <laughs> Over the next half hour, we're going to be looking at the stories and pictures that make up the rest of the week's news as we tax the knowledge of our four guests. And I use the word very much in its Iraqi sense. <laughs> <laughs> this week, uh, two teams of witty and politically astute celebrities uh, couldn't make it, so uh, <laughs> we've got this lot here instead. Uh, we have two regular team captains on my right, the man responsible for turning Private Eye into a respectable organ of the press, although which organ, I'm not at liberty to say, <laughs> Ian Hislop, and uh, he's joined by comedian Sandy Toxvig. <laughs> and to my left, the other team captain, the man they call Mr Comedy, Sorry, Mr. Merton, uh, Paul Merton, and he's joined by a Sunday Times journalist and Booker Prize judge, someone who once described Ian Hislop as sexier than Richard Gere, Kate Saunders. <laughs> Paul and Ken, uh, what has uh, this bit of film not got to do with this week's news? Um... Oh, that, that's the, the panic and, and the, the, the despair that swept across Britain when it was discovered we didn't have a Deputy Prime Minister anymore. <laughs> <laughs> topical joke. Not funny, but it was topical. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll go if that's the way it's going on. Please, I don't have to be insulted. I do that all week. Carry on anyway. Yes, the storms. It's, you were going to say. It was the storm that was predicted that didn't arrive. Mm. Right. Absolutely. Like the interest right. rate cut that didn't arrive. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm going to be partly political tonight. No, 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 I can tell that. If I'm being abused, I might as well get a few ones in. <laughs> I'd like to rephrase uh... that. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's all right, it's after 10 I, I just want to assure viewers, nothing happened in the dressing room. <laughs> well, oh, you... how soon we forget. <laughs> <laughs> I don't suppose I'll even get a card at Christmas now. Um, a in the old hours. days, you'd have got a grant, Paul. <laughs> I made such a what, boasts Nigel. <laughs> to swallow. <laughs> no, it's not a reference to food. <laughs> Ian and Tony. Robert Maxwell. Oh, yes. Princess Mike. Michael of Kent, Cliff Richard, and well, and I'll give you an Yeti. extra point if you, if you can tell me who this is. In fact, that's well, not Frank Boff after a heavy session. <laughs> <laughs> Bondage and breakfast. What's that uh, all about? Yes, this is the uh, couple who opened up a combined dungeon and hotel. <laughs> and mm. You can get whipped and then a fried egg on toast. <laughs> <laughs> Trust House 40, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, Allegedly. Part, part of the talk. <laughs> <laughs> Do I understand the libel laws? Um, <laughs> you can say anything you like as long as you say allegedly at the end yeah. of it. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. Allegedly, yes, I believe so. It's uh, a good way to start, Paul. <laughs> I'm not sure it always covers you, does it, Ian? It's, uh... <laughs> Craig, a hugely talented and attractive foursome for you. Trevor McDonald. <laughs> and Diamond. Jimmy Savile. 
<laughs> Can I confer with Trevor on this? <laughs> it would do you no good. No, he hasn't any um, idea either. Just think back. Have you been to bed with any of those? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not answering that. <laughs> The one in the let's, green let's hat. Leave, now you must there, remember. Right? <laughs> you got drunk. You were in Jellystone Park. <laughs> the stars were out. <laughs>
yeah. all involved in um, record attempts for the sexual act. That's Roger Moore, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, this is degenerating into a farce. <laughs> This isn't a leg over question. I mean, all those people can read apart from Kelvin McKenzie. <laughs> <laughs> they were all journalists, mm, apart from apart Steffi Graf. Stryker. Churchill, Paula Yates, she did a book on underwear. Makes her a journalist. <laughs> Ish. Oh, Kelvin's not a journalist. Stupid, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Forget that, sorry. You suddenly realised your mistake. Um, no, well, if uh, none of you got it, then I'll tell you. The answer is, in fact, that they're all nudists, except Kelvin McKenzie, who likes everyone else to be in the nude. Well, Churchill isn't a nudist now, He was. I was don't he? know what state he's in. Oh, yeah, he turned <laughs> up in water in the nude. I remember that. Stalin, Roosevelt, Churchill with no clothes on in the middle. <laughs> Nudist. Oh, how stupid of us, the Did nudist. You know, no, there's a story that um, the president came in, Roosevelt came in to his room, and Churchill was in the bath. And he just got up out of the bath. Uh, my dear. What was that he was putting in his mouth? <laughs> he did. And the president was quite taken aback. Mm, I'm very much. Because uh, Churchill was not the small man. <laughs> And anyway, how do you know this? Is it an old flame of it yours? It was on telly. If you watch that series on Churchill on BBC Two, you would is that know. That, is that that programme called Churchill's Knob? <laughs> <laughs> I was quite upset by this Bishop of Galway thing. Why? Well, I used to go out with him. <laughs> and I, didn't know, I knew nothing about this woman in America. He used to take me to the pictures. Yeah. <clears throat> Sit in the back row and hold his crook. <laughs> Paul and Griff, a scientific breakthrough for you. Oh, uh, ah, yes. Um, it's a man with an illuminated penis there. <laughs> Sorry, is Paul, it, over to you. You were going to say is, what this is. This is it the here. Holy Ghost trapped in a fishbowl? <laughs> <laughs> um, you, were, you were right as far as is it. <laughs> Griff, an unorthodox claim for you. I do tricks just like Jesus. Not me, is it? <laughs> um, this is Paul Daniels, isn't it? I, uh, because I, I read uh, the News of the World on Sunday, and he's claiming that he does tricks just like Jesus, in fact. <laughs> and, um, and he's he's doing, he's, what he's claiming he's is, in fact, that all Jesus is... I nearly said tricks, then, but all Jesus is miracles. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> were, in fact, <laughs> the sort of tricks that any old conjurer could do. Perhaps we should... So there was, the, you know, the miracle of the sawing the woman in half. <laughs> <laughs> at Gethsemane, which we all remember, and the miracle yes. of producing the doves out of a uh, hat. <laughs> mm -hmm. In but the in And vice versa. I yeah, mean, so, Paul Daniel's so show is brilliant. So. The resurrection of Lazarus. Do you see yeah. that one on his last TV show? Perhaps, yeah. perhaps, um, yeah. perhaps we should crucify Paul Daniel. It also implies that Jesus was a bit of a mug because he didn't work the miracle of having eight million viewers on a Saturday yeah. evening at eight o'clock on BBC. It also implies he might have been bald and from the Midlands, doesn't it? <laughs> Doesn't have quite the same ring about it, really. Mm. Is Jesus walked across the water, ably assisted by the lovely Debbie McGee? <laughs> 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 uh, it, uh, it is Paul Daniels uh, who claims that uh, Jesus Christ was just like him. So uh, presumably, Christ broke bread at the feast of Cana, turned water into wine, and spoke unto the crowd, saying, "And that's magic." <laughs> It's, uh, it's Lord Archer again, as all the others were decorated with military honours. Uh, oddly enough, uh, Archer is an associate member of the DCM League, which you can only join if you or a close relative hold the Distinguished Conduct Medal. When asked by a League spokesman if his father, William Archer, had won the medal, Archer replied, I rarely talk about my father and his DCM. <laughs> no doubt because his father didn't win the DCM at all. It was, in fact, a completely different William Archer. Perhaps his father was too busy being the British Consul in Singapore, as it stated in an interview you, uh, Jeffrey gave to Guardian journalist Terry Coleman in 1973. Unfortunately, Singapore has never had a consul. Uh, the simple truth is that his father was a local journalist in Western Supermare. <laughs> Still a consul, journalist, Singapore, Western Supermare. It's so easy to <laughs> see how the mistake was made. In case anyone's in interested, uh, cartoon dog Muttley was frequently decorated by his owner Dick Dastardly, or Lord Dastardly, as he probably now is. <laughs> Most dicks seem to become Lord. Uh, <laughs> uh, Paul, XMP Harvey Proctor. 
<laughs> Julian Critchley, Gary Lineker, <laughs> and <laughs> the man currently sitting on your right hand. Do you buy your shirt? <laughs> Looking pleased with yourself. <laughs> uh, do you buy your shirts off Harvey Proctor? No, I don't. You don't? No. I thought because I thought, he's a shirt manufacturer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah. Oh, well, um, mm -hmm. have, you, have you scored something like 46 goals for England? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, well, if it wasn't in very poor taste, I'd say some of those people left the Tory party after scandals, but. Um, <laughs> that obviously yeah, isn't the yeah. answer. No, I think that's a bit below the belt. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, Paul, you're I, well, I don't thing. know. Is, is it, um, Do you want uh, your colleague to help you? Yes. Mm. Yes, I think he does. Well, it's, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Ian, but it's all about the shirts that oh. the people other than Gary Lineker are wearing. We're all alleged to be models for shirts. I was alleged to uh, be about to embark on a new career as a male model. So I never did. Uh, well, it's an interesting answer, because I've actually got a different... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you're mainly, you're mainly right. It's, uh, it's former MP Gary Harvey Lillipop. Proctor. I've got, uh, as all the others have modelled shirts, think my whereas partner Harvey knows. Proctor Absolutely. makes them, um, and indeed lifts them, onto... Uh, <laughs> onto shelves of his new shop. <laughs> Lord, Lord Cecil here modelled shirts last year, leading uh, his colleague Julian Critchley to... He didn't model shirts. No, I didn't. Ah, well, yeah. Do you, you believe him? <laughs> <laughs> Think of his record. <laughs> well, the NHS enough. is safe. Yeah, is... I didn't model shirts. <laughs> I always fancy modelling them ah. underpants, you know. <laughs> you know, where you're standing next to another bloke wearing underpants, pretending to look at something far off. <laughs> Look, there's the bloke who's got our trousers. <laughs> As plans for further Star Wars films are officially shelved, Obi-Wan Kenobi finds a new job at the UN. <laughs> In protest at the massive arms reduction announced by Mikhail Gorbachev, Soviet soldiers attempt to commit suicide with the only weapons still available. <laughs> So in this uh, one-off Christmas special, it's time for our exclusive royal round. Four regal headlines for the teams to decipher, beginning with Paul. What is the price of bonking Miss Tonking? I've got the telephone number, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mark Phillips, isn't it? Didn't he have an affair with somebody, uh, a woman in New Zealand, Australia? It was a paternity suit that she mm -hmm. put in. I can't remember what her child was called. Your Royal Highness, I think. Uh, <laughs> yes. It wasn't it because uh, the babies had hooves or something? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's New Zealand show jumper Heather Tonkin, who claimed in March to have been made pregnant in a horse riding clinic by Mark Phillips. <laughs> uh, at least it was either him or Champion. <laughs> at the time. Uh, Clive, a bit of hush for this. Shh, one's thinking. Um, well, I can nearly remember this because I th it's something to do with Princess Anne uh, <coughs> wanting the, um, the loudspeaker turned down at Charing Cross Station. And uh, the bit I can't remember is why she'd, she'd have needed that. Where in uh, has she been living in a box in, on the <laughs> Strand uh, for the last year and has been disturbed by the Tano announcements of being, being very loud? Something I think that's like roughly right. Something along those lines. It's also a free advertisement for Schweppes, uh, the very, very good. Uh, uh, manufacturers of tonic water <laughs> and um what I'm very it's crap yeah. yes well, i think they're, they're nice. very good and uh, let's see who gets the credit <coughs> of it delivered in time for christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> My kind of company. Well, I had Easter I eggs. They do very good Easter eggs as well. Mm -mm, <laughs> I love them. Cadbury's Schweppes. Can I just, it's, it's too, can too I just say that you can't? Can I just say that you can't beat gold bullion? <laughs> No, I'm afraid you can't. I think the announcement was the uh, A47 to Purley is delayed yeah. and uh, Mark Phillips has got another woman up the duff. 
So she asked for it to be turned off, I guess. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a reference to one Wednesday in April when uh, Princess Anne asked for all the announcements at Charing Cross Station to be switched off for four hours, <laughs> causing confusion and delays across the whole Kent region. So no change there. <laughs> the, the, the reason given was that she was thinking, good job it wasn't Princess Di or they would have had to close down the whole of London. <laughs> Harry, uh, oh. Operation for Prince. Which one and why? Oh, this is... Is this to do with Prince Andrew? Well, there's no, a picture of him naked in the sun. <laughs> and it, it, instead of a, a manhood, he seemed to have a crown, so maybe... Or some other kind of helmet, so maybe they were... <laughs> we're doing some operation to, to ch change that. Or it could be Prince Charles who, who broke his arm. Any I idea, think, I think it's the son of Prince Charles uh, who got a golf club over his head. Very good. And uh, had to have an operation to remove the golf club. <laughs> and, uh, Should have removed the head, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the Royal Family did a great job. But they, uh... <laughs> mm, tomorrow. Good luck to you. Yes. Yeah. Did you have a nice Christmas five days ago? Because we get repeated. Yes. Don't yeah. we? <laughs> I did, actually, yes. I, I can't wait for Boxing Day. It was fun the day before yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't oh, there a pity about Clive Mr. Anderson Tate. being knocked down by that car? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, the driver's headlights were dazzled on his head. And just... <laughs> yeah, it's Prince William who was rushed to hospital in a multi-vehicle convoy in, uh, in June after a fellow pupil hit him on the head with a golf putter. <laughs> A spokesman for the school expressed surprise and regret and said it's absolutely unthinkable that a fellow pupil should have hit the prince with a putter, should have chosen a nine-iron. <laughs> and uh, finally, Ian, no prizes for guessing, who's a four-star Charlie? Oh, this is Prince Charles. Um, oh, point for that. <laughs> <laughs> and well, four stars so, of Doug Petrol, point for that? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> This is, um... Because he drives a Bentley, which is a very, very Hank good car, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yes, very good car, yes. Very good car, yeah. indeed. Mm. Sorry, it's not my very used to um, having his own show. It's very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get yours one day, Ian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Prince Charles drove in his car to a summit in Europe um, in order to make a speech about um, economy um, of petrol on cars. Mm. And then it was revealed after he'd driven in one himself. It's, uh, it's Prince Charles who, after making several entreaties on the environmental benefits of saving fuel, was discovered to have had his Bentley driven all the way to uh, Czechoslovakia to meet him. Uh, the car apparently does nine miles to the gallon. That's uh, almost as much as Princess Margaret. <laughs> this, is, uh, <laughs> this is merely the tip of the royal iceberg when it comes to petrol consumption. It transpires that the royal family uses 25 cars and 17 motorbikes for their engagements. They just can't get the Queen mother off that Harley Davidson. <laughs> All of which uh, brings us to the end of that treacherous round. And the ever mounting totals on our scoreboard read as follows. Uh, Ian and Harry have 18, and Paul and Clive are lengthening their stride with 23. And so we enter the welcoming arms of our penultimate round, some of the more frivolous bits of film footage to recollect, Ian and Harry. A particularly memorable, if damp, experience for you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, that's the Pavarotti concert, isn't it? The, the royal family had their umbrellas up, and they were asked at the front, and all the politicians, and the people at the back asked them to put them down so that they could see them getting soaked. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and Princess Di was Ooh. there, and Pavarotti sang a song specially for her. It's all rather gorgeous, isn't I it? I don't remember any song called, called Overblown one. Tart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Princess Di was particularly annoyed to be there since Duran Duran were playing Wembley Arena that night. <laughs> and by all accounts, uh, Norman Major was uh, pretty miserable too, as apparently Guns N' Roses were on at Hammersmith only. <laughs> <laughs> but, mm, Paul and Clive, a heartwarming, uh, some heartwarming footage of man's best friend for you. Um, oh, yes, oh. Rottweilers, Pitbull Terriers. This it's... is to do with Kenneth Baker, isn't it? I recognised him there. Um... <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is banning Pitbulls. They've got to be muzzled, haven't they? And uh... Kenneth Baker has, yes. yes. <laughs> I thought it was just Kenneth Baker's always pleased to... Uh, eager to please John Major, and he heard John Major in cabinets one day say, why don't we muzzle the bitch? <laughs> <laughs> But 
but she's still there. Mm. <laughs> they didn't manage the it, did they? Somewhere. Apparently there are 10,000 pit bulls in Britain, together with 200 band dogs and one Japanese tozer. So if anyone's attacked by a tozer, even Scotland Yard should be able to solve that one. <laughs> uh, the owner of the only tozer defended her They'll pet. arrest a poodle. <laughs> <laughs> Put it inside for 15 years. <laughs> uh, could be an Irish wolfhound, I think you'll find, yes. <laughs> Yes, the, the owner of the only Tozer <laughs> defended her pet. Uh, he's quiet and not aggressive with a fantastic personality, said uh, Mrs Yvonne Wilson as he playfully spat out her big toe. <laughs> uh, Ian and Harry, what strange agricultural practice is this? Serial killing. <laughs> <laughs> We do deduct marks for puns no. on this programme, you do realise. This is uh, crop circles, corn circles. It is. It's someone demonstrating corn. how they're made, isn't it? There's so two blokes called Doug and Pete, isn't it? Mm. Yes, Doug and David, actually, before you go into Pete and Dad impersonations. All right, we'll go into Dave and Doug impersonations. <laughs> Hello, Doug. <laughs> Hello. You don't recognise it, because Dave's not very famous. Doug. Serial killer. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how they think uh, of them, you know, no, I don't. No, five mm. <laughs> it's to do with a fraud, isn't it? It it's was found one. out to be a fraud. They're not aliens. It's uh, These yes. two people it said these we invented brothers. them. In fact, they were wrong. It was, in fact, Robert Maxwell being gentle with a secretary. <laughs> 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 Robert Maxwell having to lie down, I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's they all said about... they did them all. All of them all over the world, thousands of them in they six different done countries, them all, no. yeah. which they obviously didn't. No. But the press, mm. having believed it was aliens, thought, oh, it must be Doug and Dave now. Yeah. <laughs> Did some Doug rigorous checking, went and took some photos in the field, and then had went a back couple to of the pints, and then went home. Went back to the planet Zanussi, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it's all about the corn Zanussi circles. A uh, series of. <laughs> It's a particularly good yeah. brand of washing yes. machine. Yes. <laughs> uh, but it's now claimed that they were uh, all faked by two pensioners, Doug Bauer and David Charlie. Uh, they were last seen heading off towards Scotland <laughs> with a large rubber dinosaur. <laughs> so, uh, lastly, Paul and Clive, what's this uh, member of a popular beat combo been up to this year? Look, there's Esther about to arrest him. Mm. <laughs> that's, um, that's, <laughs> that's Bill Wyman trying to decide which one of those to marry. <laughs> 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 he's got di he's got divorced, isn't he? Uh, or he's, or he's suing for divorce, whatever you call it. Yes, it is uh, the Rolling Stones' wrinkly Bill Wyman, uh, who this year divorced a uh, 20-year-old Mandy Smith, whom uh, he first seduced when she was 13, and he's now going out with a 31-year-old. Outrageous! She's old enough to be his wife. <laughs> uh, Mandy Smith uh, received four million pounds as a payoff uh, for a marriage that she says was only consummated five times. So that's eight hundred thousand pounds a bonk. <laughs> Even the DPP couldn't afford that much. No. <laughs> At the end of all that, it's time to uh, turn our gaze to the gargantuan totals so far amassed. And uh, as you can see, Ian and Harry have a not entirely bad 22, but Paul and Clive have a copious 27. Wow. <laughs> We're building a real Maxwell of a score. Mm. And so we uh, enter the home straight, that is our missing words round. Each team is shown a selection of the year's headlines with one or two <coughs> words missing. They have to name those words or come up with a better alternative. As is uh, traditional, he who lies last goes first, so uh, Ian and Harry. That privileged position is currently held by you. Right. Bosses put Lamont in what? Poor. <laughs> Jail. Panto. <laughs> James? No, a spot is actually the answer. They uh, put him in a spot? Hmm. Well, idea, the isn't spot it? cleared up immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I always use Le Mans. <laughs> uh, next, uh, Birmingham Six Detectives to what? Become judges. <laughs> uh, to face court is actually the answer. Uh, next, Kinnock scorns the Tories and lays out what? Frank Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> new, new patio. <laughs> 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 It's a lovely thought. That's his policy for you. <laughs> his, his policies for you. It's a very sensible answer. I'll give you one. His priority. Oh, oh excellent. Answer. Next, uh, London life. Zoo offers plan for what? Thatcher's retirement. <laughs> Open air barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lost a lot uh, of friends. Rescue. There. <laughs> rescue. Uh, survival is actually the answer. And Almost finally, rescue. seven thousand. For <laughs> no, it's not. Five thousand uh, uh, pit bulls still to join what? Masons. 
Rolling uh, Stones? Mm, no. <laughs> register. Nothing, nothing. Yes, new register. Very good. New register. Uh, let's see uh, if Paul and Clive can do any better. Not difficult. Uh, Fergie bows to Queen's mm. ban on what? Cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> No, friends. Bad children's books. Friends oh, is nearer the, uh, nearer the answer. And uh, next, hard. Kilroy is returning to what? Primitive pond life. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly sort of regressing backwards. <laughs> Not as far as I'm aware. Mm. Old time is actually the answer. Oh. Next, Hattersley pours what on Major's leadership? Oh. Spittle. <laughs> Le Mans. Peanut butter. <laughs> Scorn. Scorn is correct. Yes, Very good. It. Next, Orkney children uh, flown home to what? Dolphins. <laughs> To spend Christmas in the arms of their family. <laughs> That's a lovely answer and completely wrong. Mm. It's a party. <laughs> and finally, bug is found in Mirror Finance Chief's what? Underpants. <laughs> Office. Office is correct. Yes. Well done. I thought it was collection of insects. Uh, well, you'd be wrong. <laughs> They've had a look at the pension fund and apparently a big fat cheque is missing. <laughs> 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 it's Christmas, I don't care. <laughs> uh, right. So, after that non-existent display of lateral thinking, a fleeting <laughs> glance of, at our score reveals that this year's stuffed turkeys are uh, Ian and Harry with 26, and this year's plum puddings and recipients of a short snowfall are Paul and Clive with 31. Oh. <laughs> I never, I never thought I'd see you with dandruff. <laughs> <laughs> Just another ball joke. Uh, so, a corn-fed chicken to our winners, a bag of giblets to our losers. But uh, before they rush off to Trafalgar Square for a quick dip, uh, there's our caption competition to pay our respects to. Paul and Clive, what did you think of uh, for this? Oh, I top tricks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> most, most chemists yes. are uh, handy. Uh, <laughs> The family size is particularly useful at this time of year. Yeah. What about the caption for this? Um, uh... Come here, Rudolph, I'll give you a red nose. Yeah. Um... No, it's not a red nose, Rudolph, I was looking for. DPP uh... curb crawling scandal okay. takes new twist. <laughs> <laughs> Trying out these Wellington boots for a friend. <laughs> Thank you. Hang on, hang, not, hang on, Santa, you're Jeremy Beadle. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's the minicab driver. I'm not going to South Antarctica at this time of night. <laughs> these High Court judges, they'll kick anybody. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Ian and Harry, how about yours? EEC rules against Santa Monopoly. <laughs> Mirror pensioners get employment. <laughs> spot, spot the drunk. <laughs> Arsenal fans remember a happy time when they used to win. <laughs> <laughs> Many years ago now. And on the... <laughs> How Not fascinating much. football is. <laughs> <laughs> wake up, wake up. Oh. <laughs> I, I tell you, I'm not interested in football. I'm more interested in the bumper private eye book of jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can't wait to get the video of the Clive Anderson show. <laughs> oh, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> and on the, the video of you on the show. You were a, you were a superb guest. I was very good yes. on your show. You were excellent. Yeah. I didn't say too much. No, I didn't talk no. all the time. No. <laughs> mm. You got that out of your system. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy Christmas, <laughs> Baldy. <laughs> <laughs> and you, fat face. <laughs> Why I'm on the team of the bloody Bash Street kid yeah. everywhere. <laughs> 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 An old acquaintance. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>